Hello folks, Jason Christman here, JC's Bees. And in today's video, I want to discuss the oxalic acid vapor wand. Uh, many of you are using this product, so I thought I'd put together a video to show how to appropriately use it in all of the steps. Before we get into this wand, I want to share a real quick tip with you. You know, this time of year, a lot of beekeepers are feeding their hives to get them built up for winter. And with feeding comes robbing. Well, I learned uh, probably a year ago a little trick to keep robbing down. And that little trick is, you see this little chicken waterer here over my shoulder? I fill that up with uh, syrup to feed the bees, do some open feeding, and uh, in this particular feeder, I do add a little bit of lemongrass oil. And what that does is that smell comes up in the air and the bees smell it and they find that feeder rather quickly. Um, after about an hour, hour and a half of putting feed in there, I'll go around and feed my nukes. Now the syrup I'm feeding my nukes does not have lemongrass oil because I don't add any of those scents or oils to my uh, feeding regimen just because I've noticed over the years that when you put all those scents into your food, it makes it a lot more... Uh, noticeable for robbers to come and come right in. I mean, it's just like you ever walk by a, a real nice steakhouse, you didn't even go in, but you can smell the steak outside. It's the same reasoning. So for that reason, I don't add any of the honeybee healthy, lemongrass oil or any of that to the syrup I'm feeding my nukes. Now what I've noticed though, is all the action goes to here and my nukes aren't getting robbed. So this might be something you wanna play with. Set you up a little feeder. Um, it don't have to be far from your nukes. As you can see, it's only feet away from my colonies. Um, I'll start feeding here, hour and a half before I go out and feed the nukes. And I've noticed very little, if any at all, on the robbing. So now let's go over and check out how to use the vapor wand. So this is a little cart that I use when I'm using the wand. Basically, I've got uh, my firewood cart on the bottom. I've got a plastic tub inside with all the uh, materials that I'm going to need. The materials are gonna be my wand, some rags, a timer that you can set the minutes on. You just got a simple oven timer, your auxilic acid with a measuring scoop, a car battery, and a couple different bottom board options I'm gonna discuss. And I wanna explain why I use those. But having all the materials I need on this cart, I'm able just to wheel it right along to the next hive. And if you don't do firewood or have a firewood cart, I've also seen people use uh, a wagon behind the lawnmower, um, the wheelbarrow. So there's a couple other options for you. Okay, so let me take a minute and explain these baseboards that I've made and the reason I've made them. The bottom board on this hive is basically just one single board that's wide enough to cover the whole bottom. And the center of that, I'm going to guess a good four or five inches wide, running a good 12 inches long, is an area that's screened off with regular household window screen. It's metal, but it's window screen. To do a proper uh, oxalic acid treatment with a wand or the ProVap, either way, having a screened bottom board on there is going to allow a lot of those vapors to escape, which is not what you want. So I've made up these baseboards like you see here just for nukes with entrances like this. You see, when the entrance, when you have an entrance disc, instead of a lower entrance, like you see over there, that's the appropriate entrance made for these wands. Not the round hole entrance. That will not go in that hole. And even if it did go in that hole, you're gonna run right into the side of the frames when you need to be under them. So you need an entrance like that. And this baseboard here gives me that option. I can simply go around, smoke these, this box, and then break it free from the bottom break the bee glue, you know how they glue everything, break the baseboard apart from the top, two boxes, and then simply set them over here. And then I can begin my treatment. 
Now the way I have this baseboard set up is it's a solid baseboard. Let me pull it over here in the sun. It's a solid baseboard. I've taken an old license plate and tacked it down on there. That way this hot wand doesn't scorch anything. And I've taken two brass rods and put across. And what those brass rods do, as you can see, is it keeps this from twisting and it keeps it from one, that end from lifting up. So I'm gonna show you now how to do a treatment with one of these wands. And it's very simple once you understand the steps. So I think I'm gonna have you set to where you can see everything. You're gonna be able to see when I hook both cables up to the battery. You're gonna be able to see the timer, hopefully the whole time off to the side down here on this box. You're gonna be able to see the nuke baseboard that I'm gonna remove the bees from. And you're gonna see the baseboard that I'm moving them to and the whole treatment. Black to black, red to there when I'm ready. Next thing I'm going to do is close these discs off. We're going to insert our wand. Loaded. As indicated here, a nuke, half gram per five frames. Wand goes in. Pack that rag in there so it don't move. Now this is going to be the very beginning of the treatment stage. So we're going to want to set two and a half minutes, and which this doesn't do two and a half minutes, I got to do three. I'll just watch for it to count down to two and a half and then stop it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get ready to hook my battery up, but I'm going to set this over here. Hopefully you can see it as it counts down. And uh, once I get my battery hooked up, I'm going to hit start. Now we'll move the smoker back. That way we're not getting smoke fumes con confused with uh, vapor fumes. So just real quick while that's going on. Here's a sequence of how I broke, how this is broke down. So we're going to do the treating stage for two and a half minutes. Then we're going to disconnect it from the battery, go another two minutes. And during this whole time, we're leaving it sealed with our shirt or our rag. After that period of time we're going to remove the wand and reseal it and we're going to leave it sealed for another 10 minutes. After that I can then transfer this nuke back to the other board and move to the next one. So if you didn't catch that on this card it will be wrote down in the video description. Okay so it should be done vaporizing. I didn't really see any vapors, but we've almost went the full three minutes now, so I need to stop this. So now that our time is up, we're going to disconnect it from the battery, and this is going to be the power down or the cool down stage. So we're going to go ahead and set an additional two minutes and start that. But you don't want to start that until you've disconnected your power from the battery. Okay, so the timer down here has almost run out. So now we're going to be able to remove the wand and set the timer for an additional 10 minutes. Now it's at this time, if you bring a bucket of water along with you, you can dip your wand, says the instructions. Let me get this set before I forget. 10 minutes. Um, so as I was saying, um, 
It's at this time you're able to dip this down in water and cool it so you can go ahead and prepare for your next treatment. Personally, I kind of see that being hard on this, so I have not done that. Instead, I'll set it here on the brick and let it cool because I need that baseboard anyway to go to my next hive. So, I gotta wait. Now once this 9 minutes and 30 seconds is over, um, we'll be able to remove our uh, rag old t-shirt in my case and transfer it back to their original base so don't panic um, because the hive's sealed and you've literally got bees just crawling all over the front of the hive that's how it works I mean you can see I've got it going on here and what that means is is these bees were not affected by this treatment nothing was accomplished from the treatment for these bees so this should show you earlier in the day later in the day might be a better time to, tr to do this but at the same time to do it at all is better than not to do it okay so we're down to eight minutes and 18 17 seconds we're getting there I think I'm going to pause this while that finishes and then we'll take back up um, when the timer is almost done. Looks like a minute and 45 seconds. So we're almost there. You can see we still got a lot of bees crawling around in the front of the hive. We're going to open the entrance so that the bees can remember where, where to get in at. We're going to smoke them up out of this handhold before I grab it. And just like that, it's like the treatment never happened. Move on to the next one. Nothing really changes as far as the style or the steps to do a treatment, regardless of the size of the hive. As you can see here, I'm doing a 10 frame colony. Got a little bit more traffic, that would be about the only difference. All the steps, still the same. So keep in mind, any cracks or crevices that you have in your box, you're gonna wanna tape off or cram some grass in or a rag you can see on this hive, they had a hole here. I plugged that with grass. And then there's been a crack all the way down there along the bottom of the brood box, right where it meets the baseboard. And they've been using it for an entrance most of the summer. So I stuffed some grass in that. That's why there's bees clustering over there. We got bees around this. Not too many use this entrance down here, but we've still got a few trying to get in around the rag. If you don't want to use grass, um, use some uh, masking tape or something. I wouldn't suggest using anything like Gorilla Tape because what that's going to do is just pull the paint off of your box. So what would you think? Um, I will say this works rather well, but if you've got more than 10 colonies, eh, you're probably going to want to shy away from this method because of all the steps and time that it will consume. Um, if you do have more than 10 colonies, you might be interested in checking out my homemade ProVap video. And I'm going to link it up here in the corner, so make sure you check that out. Um, I also want to stress a few very strong points about this, this here wand. You want to do your treatments five to seven days apart, and you want to do three of these treatments at the very least. Now, there is some talk on some of the uh, forms on beekeeping, like Bee Source that many different beekeepers have their own way of doing it but the main goal here is five to seven days apart and three treatments i was reading on bee source the other day and some of them go three days apart or five days apart and they do five treatments um, some of them do seven days and they do five treatments some of them do five days and they do seven treatments so it's just all over the board but um, from what I'm seeing on Randy Oliver's website, 
the very first treatment is where you get your big kaboom on the mite drop. The second two treatments are just little uh, drops in the population of mites, and that's because the first population just knocked the crap right out of them. You do want to make sure when you do this treatment that you remove your supers or get you a, a piece of poster board. Lift your supers up, slide the poster board in, that way the uh, vapors aren't able to get up in the super, and then you don't have to actually manually take them off. You could also use uh, a piece of Luon or a piece of cardboard, or you could go ahead and take the supers all the way off, set them to the side, put your uh, inner cover and outer cover back on, and then follow through with your treatment. Once your treatment's done, put your supers back on. Now, this is the reason that a lot of beekeepers will wait until the supers are off. The downside to that is by the time you have your supers off and stored for the, for the uh, fall and winter, uh, by that point, you're kind of getting to the, do you really have time to raise healthy bees to winter stage? So um, I suggest that you do not wait too much longer. Go ahead and get your treatments done and uh, see how it works out for you. I think you're gonna like this treatment as far as uh, the expense per treatment. Um, once you go to this method, you're going to be able to treat each hive for nearly pennies. So that's pretty cheap. Now that's not including your time, of course. That's just the materials, the oxalic acid. So something worth checking into for sure. I also want to mention that you're going to get better results with this treatment if you treat early in the morning or late in the evening. See, so you want the bulk of your bees to be in the hive. That way they're getting these vapors. If they're out flying, and you're treating and you as i had in the video had the rag pushed in you've got all these foragers coming in those bees didn't get vaporized so the mites on them still exist so keep this in mind now i do want to point out i would rather see you treat midday than to not do this at all or to not treat at all so if you're only limited to midday treat uh, treatments go for it I would rather see you do that than just totally skip treating. So I hope you like this video. If so, throw me a big thumbs up. That'll help boost it in the YouTube search ranks and make it easier for other beekeepers to find. If you haven't subscribed, please do so and make sure you click the little bell so you get notified when I release new videos. I'd like to invite each and every one of you to come over and check out uh, my Patreon page. You don't have to uh, throw any money at me just come over and and check out some of the uh, information i'm sharing on there i'm doing a weekly beekeeping q a now and they release right after this video every week is a new question so if it's something you're interested in come on over and check it out uh thanks again folks